New York and on the new Hot 97 app. Ebro in the morning. On Hot 97. Ebro in the morning, Lauren Styles, Rosenberg, give it up for Chew and Tell, Edgy of Four. Yeah. On the- <laughs> Yo, now, Malficent 2, um, uh, big uh, big movie. It's it's almost like this movie is adult Disney. That's yeah. how I see it. It's yeah, very, yeah. The, the first one was very adult. Like, I have a five-year-old. Okay. And I was like, yeah, nah, this ain't for five-year-olds. Yeah, okay. I can see that. So but, some... but it also feels very, uh, it's kind of scary. Yeah, I was thinking about that, actually. Whether I'd be scared if I was very, very young. Did you guys see the first one? Nah, uh, yeah. I haven't seen it. Uh, Angelina Jolie. It's basically um, uh, the uh, the Snow White story, right? It's yeah, exactly. Snow White yeah, story. Yeah. I know. I remember the story, from right. the, um, from but the, yeah, I feel like this one is a little bit even more edgy than the first one. I think it kind of goes a little uh, a little deeper, and then it explores that universe a bit more of Maleficent, of yeah. what what you know what she is, the dark fae, the dark fairies, and yeah. uh, and her whole kind of world. You know, uh, and then the, the the difficulties that they're having with the humans, all of that is explored pretty well. You know, pretty fully. How many Disney films have you participated in at this point? Uh, I don't know, actually. Wow. <laughs> like a, a few. I mean, you know, from uh, between uh, the Marvel stuff and this right. and the Lion King, and you know, right, yeah, right, right. yeah, quite a few. Do they got like a package deal on you. It's like, <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> now we gonna read. Yeah. Everyone's different, yeah, bro. No, Everyone's yeah. different. Everyone is different, which is great. You know, the whole thing about Disney is that there is a real range of storytelling there. Right. You know, and I, and I love that. It wasn't like the thing that I was thinking about doing in a way. Is you know, doing all these different projects with Disney, but it, they do tell stories really, really That's wonderfully it. well. And I think that their themes, you know, with this story with the Lion King, you know, it's really what's underneath it all that really. Appeals to me. Now, 12 Years a Slave was kind of how I, f- I feel like the role that really put you in the mainstream. Yes? Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's, no. Yeah, I mean, no, no that's, that's what you got an Oscar nomination that, for. That is exactly yeah. right, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. No, yeah. but I, I, I feel like that's when I started hearing your name more. Okay, that was, that's, yeah, that's true, yeah. Now, sure, you probably have So what do you consider? So then what, what do you consider to be like that break that... Well, I guess for me, I did a film uh, called Dirty Pretty Things yeah, about 20, nearly 20 years yeah. ago now which wow. uh, with, um, with um, St- uh, Stephen Frears, uh, which was for me, I think, the kind of one of the sort of breakout roles. I'd done Amistad before that, you right. know, but uh, for, as a leading role, I, I think uh, Dirty Pretty Things was the thing that really kind of uh, opened up the film world to me in a, in a different way. Um, so I'd sort of consider that, but maybe that's a little niche, you know. Right, <laughs> like, that, maybe that, that's, that's like, what started well, opening the doors in Hollywood. That's but it true. Was, but it wasn't like oh, down the street, on the street every day. I'm guessing people were like, well, "Oh, then, that's a guy from Dirty Pretty Things." Yeah, that's true. But then that kind of opened up me working with, you know, I worked with Spike Lee, then Inside Man, and all of yep. that sort of uh, that kind of time, uh, and then you know Ridley Scott, American Gangster, and I, I feel like that sort of time in my working life was the time that it kind of. It was all that happening. It, that it sort of opened up on the street, you know, like people. But see, like, but now I feel like you have to be able to pronounce Chiwetel, Ezio 4. At that time, I feel like, you know, we knew your face. Yeah. And if you knew acting, you knew your name. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. that's Chiwetel. That, uh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, you're okay. that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now Scar, you were just Scar's voice in, in Lion in King. In Lion King, yeah. That's How right. did they... When you showed up to do The Lion King, is everybody there? You guys all doing it together? Everybody- Sometimes. You know, there were times when I, there was a little bit of variation, actually. Sometimes I'd be doing it on my own. Uh, then there was times when I'd be, you know, with Donald, uh, Donald Glover. And, uh, um, yeah. And then, you know, when I went in to do the recordings for the songs and stuff, it was, uh, you know, Hans Zimmer was there. We were down at Abbey Road. It was kind of amazing, you know, to be prepared in that kind of place mm-hmm. um so there was like a variation and they'd show me different kinds of the sort of as the animation was sort of developing they'd show me different stages of it as it would go along uh but i really didn't know until the end really and i recorded it over the period of about a year you know just like coming in every few months uh i didn't really know like the that's just what it would look like visually i just thought it was amazing by the time i actually I feel Sorry. like there were some people it was too real for them. I kind of watched some people who loved it, and some people were like, I liked it. It was amazing, but it was almost like the animals were too real. Like they were watching BBC Earth or something. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and they and yeah. they and it was looked like voices were overdubbed over these amazing animals. I know. I mean, it's so it's, good. Yeah. I mean, it was. Um, 
to me, it was just a, a remarkable achievement, you yeah. know, just of taking that technology to that place. Yes. And for sure, people have different, like, reactions to that. But I was, I have to tell you, I was absolutely stunned by it. And I thought it was beautifully done. Um, do actors, um, do you guys, like, ever have conversation about who's, like, are the best criers, like, mm -hmm. in the game? Like, some of the, like, because like, you cry really well. I've seen you in some movies. Like, you're a great, like, the tears, like... You have a good stress face, mm. the the singular tear stress <laughs> tear game. <laughs> like you're one of those guys. And I, I want to know if you guys have these combos. Cause like I I think like Denzel. Denzel, think about. Do you see Denzel cry a lot? No, he's not a great crier. Yo, you know what, man? Glory oh singular God. tear Glory though. Singular but you're tier, right. Yeah. That's that's deep though. What you just pointed out. People are people are scared to notice these things. Who's really a good crier? Who are game? the real good? Chewy, Chewatel. <laughs> He, he did not give you permission to call him. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I just wanted to start right it. I wanted to start it. I wanted to start it. <laughs> I mean, my teeth itch. <laughs> no, but you're a great crier. You guys don't talk thank about you. this. This, isn't, this a isn't a conversation that I've ever had before, i got to yeah. tell you. But, uh, but, I, but I thank you for that. Yeah. Heroes like Zach Galifianakis in real life. This is like right. between two ferns in <laughs> real life. Yeah, exactly. It's just called between two fucking morons. <laughs> Me and Ebro yeah. replace the plants. Yeah, well, she's, she would be between two fucking morons. She's every between day. Every, day. every day. Yes, absolutely. Can, um, can you tell us about your new role in um, Mark Wahlberg's new thriller? Uh, what is it called? I think it's called uh, Infinite. Uh, I can't tell you much about that actually. Nothing? Yeah, no. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, in time, I'll let you know. But it's early. It's early, early. Very early. Yeah. Well, once uh, now that I've called you by a name you didn't authorize, are you ever coming back to the program? <laughs> I definitely will. Okay. Whenever you like. Because otherwise, yeah, you say we might as well keep pressing. Well, because yeah. before the interview started, I asked him if he had any nicknames. He said no. So I figured out, you know, you just throw one in there. Throw one in. Why <laughs> not? Uh, See what happens. You, okay. Looking at your uh, filmography, let's just throw a few names at you. Okay. And give us a story of some sort. I see. Okay, I got one. Doctor Strange. Yo, can I? Uh, I yeah. made up the game. Doctor Strange. Yeah, Doctor Strange. Yeah. 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 So you gotta name a person. I was gonna Yo. name a person from the movie. Wait, let's have Doctor Strange talk. Yeah, that movie was hard. Yeah, like that. A sleeper too. Like people didn't know what to expect in the story arc of Marvel and all that. That shit was dope. You know, there was a, there's a sequence at the end of Doctor Strange which took uh, it's an all night sequence where everything is going in reverse. You right. Know? But right. the thing is, everything is going in reverse, but we're moving forward which was uh, the most complicated sequence that I've ever been involved in, in terms of shooting. It was a month of night shoots, trying to work out how people, you know, you're filming it in kind of real time, if you like, and you're working out how people can be moving backwards whilst you're moving forwards mm. in this in this space with this kind of overlay. So you, you have in first, real time. First, time, whilst. first time anyone said whilst on the show. Yo, give it up for oh, yeah. That was well, a big moment for us. Big, big. But yeah. keep going. Whilst. Continue on. Whilst. Keep going, <laughs> yeah. keep going. Keep going. Um, you know, but anyway, it was just like a month of nights doing that sequence. It's amazing. I think it's amazing in the film. But I, but because I don't know why, you know, people don't, in a way, kind of, there wasn't that much talk about how complex it was actually to do that sequence. But it was, it was pretty wild. Because we don't know anything as regular movie watchers. We just think everything just, just happens. happens. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? We don't know the magic. But I think even for people who were very, uh, who were just very aware of the mechanics of doing stuff like that, the complicated stuff that can go into Marvel films, I think that even for them was... Uh, were you just here at Comic-Con by any chance? Did I wasn't, you, no. Didn't no. go back. It just happened over the weekend. So I wasn't oh, sure yeah, if, you yeah. got to, if you showed up and wore your whole outfit from Doctor Strange. I and, didn't actually. Right, folks, like, so I mean, that could have been fun, but uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Rosemary. Obviously, from that movie, Rachel McAdams, is she as sweet as she appears to be seeming every time you see her in a movie? Yeah, she's uh, she's seeing. I didn't I didn't actually work with her that much on that film, but uh, yeah, she seems. Just the next time you see her, tell her she's awesome. We love her. Yeah, okay. she just makes I'll you feel good. Her. You just feel like she'd be nice and relevant. Yeah, All right. That's right. Um, uh, I forgot the first time I remember I, that didn't even cross my mind. Movies are crazy mm. because you don't always recognize someone mm -hmm. where you recognize them from. Uh, Melinda and Melinda. Oh yeah, Woody yeah. Allen, two thousand four. Yeah, yeah. What sure. was what was that experience like? The Woody yeah, Allen movie yeah. experience. It was really cool. I remember like just coming out to New York. I hadn't spent. I don't think I'd spent much time really in New York before before that before shooting that. Um, and uh, and it was kind of great to be there and doing this movie and you know a really great cast and um, you know it was. Have I they told you now, really like when funny. anyone asks you about a Woody Allen movie, we're not allowed? Are you allowed, not like? Does it feel uncomfortable to say anything about Woody Allen in the current era that we live in? Not really. No, I, I, but I, like because I just am curious about Woody Allen, the filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean I I just I'd always loved those movies and so I was really excited to make that film and I had a great time making it. You know? What about working with Andre 3000 and Four Brothers? 
That was fun too. I forgot you were in yeah. that movie. That was fun too. Yo, yeah. man, wait, hold on. Yeah. You how can't just cold tell us it? it was yo, fun. Yo, it was cold as fuck out there. <laughs> <laughs> on that ice, when you when you was about to dust him off on that ice uh, lake, on walking the ice through the lake. ice, Mark Wahlberg, yeah, yeah. and. Uh, yeah, that was. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It was, it was, it was great fun to do. I mean, I think the movie is awesome. It was great fun to make the movie. Yo, he's you know, great, John, man. John Singleton, great. may I rest in Yo, peace. Yo, man, it was know? cold. Was though. Great, it was cold, though. Yo, how cold was it? It was. It was, uh, it was cold, cold, but I had that coat. Uh, the coat was a turtleneck on twice. Yeah, yeah. The coat was its own character. Fresh. That coat was like you put on a coat like that. It makes like the kind that. of you know you don't have to do any other work. There's no yeah. no acting required. Yeah. You've done so you've done multiple movies with Denzel. I did a couple of movies with Denzel. What's, what's yeah. Denzel like? Yeah, he's well. I mean, what can I say? Denzel's one of the greatest actors that ever lived. You know? Yes, so that is a fact. It's, uh, what's he like to work with? He sounds like an interesting cat, from what I've heard. This Denzel Washington. This Denzel Washington <laughs> fella. Denzel Washington he fella. sounds like an interesting cat. <laughs> I feel like he just, I think that the thing that he is, the, you know, I don't know if people know, like he's just very, very quick in the scenes, you know, like, and so he's able to kind of play in the scenes, improvise in the scenes, change things up on a dime, you know, he changes the temperature of a scene. And and I, th I feel like if, if something's not working, he's just very adept at just switching things up and creating a moment, you know, and that's like every scene, I think every scene that he is ever in, becomes it becomes slightly iconic because he does something in the scene that just affects it, that changes it, that makes it memorable, that makes it sort of exist. Mm, that's and a really interesting. And point. it's not a and it's not a by accident, if you like. You know, it's like because he works really hard. You know, he really you know, he's just a very dedicated like a sort of singular dedication to the craft of yeah, I was going to say, I heard so, he's super, not intense in a bad way, but locked in intense, like hyper-focused. Yeah, he's yeah. finding those kind of unique, original beats, moments, you know, just what the kind of connection to the human experience, you know, that's, that's his whole thing. He's really, he's really great at it. Um, give us, uh, for us regular people who don't understand the magnitude of what we're seeing right now with Tyler Perry opening his own studios in Atlanta. Mm. We'd love to hear from you as a black man, understanding the movie game, what this actually means. Well, it means a certain level of kind of control and involvement and power and, and all of those kind of dynamics of, uh, you know, the struggle in terms of finding a way through gatekeepers and certain attitudes, you know, that are either, um, you know, just ingrained, you know, uh, cultural attitudes to, towards separation um, that may not even be necessarily aggressive or locked just into in, just, it's just, just as inherited, yeah, yeah, kind of inherited traditions of keeping certain people out of positions of power, you know, right. um, and, uh, and that's breaking down. And that's what he's doing. You know, he's just he's creating a kind of uh, a, just a, a, a new level of engagement and awareness and power and dynamics in the in the industry, which so is incredible. Having having, uh, having this Tyler Perry Studios, right? This have have you seen it? Have I you, haven't seen it. No, I haven't been to Atlanta in a minute. Right. So they say it's it's the size of if you took Disney Studios, Univer Warner Brothers, yeah. Universal, it's huge, and another it's huge. one. It's and they would all fit in there. And then some, like wow. so. The magnitude, I guess, is just ridiculous. That's incredible. Yeah. So, um, does that mean now that somebody doesn't have to use these other studios, they can go here, or movies can get done that needed other studios before? Now they don't need them. Is that what we're to understand? I I don't know. Oh <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know. That, I Are mean, you going to play Medea or not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. This I can answer. Okay. Not just yet. All right, not just. Yet. But no, I don't know. I don't know the dynamic. I mean, I don't know the all the dynamics, dynamics that they're, they're, they're doing with the studios. I'm sure yeah. they'll use it for in-house productions, and then they'll loan it out as well to other companies coming in. And you know, I'm I'm sure. I mean, and I may even get a chance. It brings more business to Atlanta. And it brings loads more business to Atlanta. Gives more and more business to those to those studios and those spaces. I mean, the actual breakdown of what they're doing, I have no oh, idea. God. But uh, but that's what I would imagine that they're that they're going to use it for for all sorts of different. Is there things. any show that you're watching on TV that you really love right now? I haven't watched a lot of TV actually recently. Um, so um, do you watch anything? Uh, let me think. I don't know. Uh, I've just been <laughs> reading scripts. <laughs> I've been reading scripts. I've been writing a lot. You know, uh, I've just been I've just been working. You know, I need to kick back. Tell me what do, what do you what do you I like Godfather in? of Harlem. 
Okay. Godfather I should check that album. out. Yeah, yeah, man. Forrest Whitaker. I, I saw a trailer for that. It's, it, I, uh, it, 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 it looks great. It looks great. Yeah, it started as two episodes. Oh, it's good? Yeah. And you like it so far? Yeah, it's on Epics. Yeah, I, um, I downloaded the app. Epics uh, now. Success, okay, cool. Succession has been... Yeah, succession. I, I actually started that. I haven't, I haven't uh, finished it yet, but I'm... I'm I'm very keen to Success check that really, out. Yeah, it's really, yeah. really good. Are you a Handmaid's Tale? In, in I saw the first season of Handmaid's Tale. I really liked it. I want to see the second Handmaid's season. Handmaid's Tale's really, it's great. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I literally forget because there are so many of them, I feel like. It's, there's I mean, some it's, good ones. It's a golden era time. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff. Would you, uh, are you interested? Do they pitch you on those for you to be in some sort of episodic TV, yeah. Netflix-y thingy? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm yeah. definitely interested. I haven't, you know, because uh, I think that kind of long form storytelling is is really great to be able to sit with characters over a long period of time. And, you know, um, I like Chernobyl. Mm. You know, I saw that. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that. And I also like that kind of form of like, you know, that was like five five episodes. Right. So it's kind of longer than a movie, but it's not like you're, t you know, you're not investing you're not to eight in years. Exactly. Right, right, right. You know, so uh, and it felt like they told that story kind of amazingly well. So if you end up in one of these type of shows, just know it's because of this interview. This That's is exactly all. right. I'll let them know. But they're doing the pitch right now. Did you by any chance get to see When They See Us? I thought it was amazing. Oh. So I thought good, it was right? amazing. I thought that was really, uh, I mean, it's heartbreaking. You know, uh, I thought it was so powerful. I thought it was, I thought it was in many ways just like a kind of, you know, a game changer in terms of, um, all, all of the kind of social perceptions of uh, of those kinds of events, um, I thought that there was just you know I thought it was just a, a new day and I, and I thought that that was an amazing. They crushed way it, of, man. Those kids crushed it. Telling that story, yeah. everything was great about when they see us. Had yeah. me really angry. No, no, it's, no, it's I was yeah. crying. I mean, it's, it's infuriating. Yeah, it's hard to watch, but it's good. Um, this man's got to go. Oh, <laughs> damn, man! It's very important. So no, no, it wasn't because of time. It's because you called him Chewy. That's yeah, it. Yeah, that was that was the bit. <laughs> That was the, that was the that's when I started doing the wrapping up yeah, sign. Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> yeah, let's get out of here. When's the movie out? Uh, October 18th. October 18th. Yeah. October 18th. Uh, <laughs> Malphus in two. Chewetel, Edgy 04. Give it up one time. <laughs>